what the, the classic definition is the smallest stable unit of matter. Unless you're in Oak Ridge and they blow them up all the time. But the atom, and, and I'm lying to you. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm lying. Or at least the, the quantum physicists say I'm lying. But we don't need, we don't need to worry about up quarks and down quarks. And plus, I don't know what they are. Anyways. And then apparently the quarks are made out of strings. We don't need to worry about it. For our purposes, <laughs> an atom consists of what's called the atomic nucleus and the electron cloud. In the atomic nucleus are two types of particles. Called, one's called a proton, one called, one's called a neutron. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons are neutral. They have a zero charge, no charge. And then surrounding this atomic nucleus are, is an electron cloud containing electrons. Electrons have a negative charge. Now, we're going to pretend that the electrons orbit the nucleus like the planets orbit the sun. All right, so there are three particles, three what we call subatomic particles that make up an atom. Protons, electrons, and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. Electrons orbit the nucleus. In this cartoon, in this diagram, how many protons in this atom? One. Yay! How many protons in this one? How many protons in this one? Three. Three. Yeah. Okay. How many electrons in this one? One. Two. Three. Hmm. Atoms in their natural state are electrically neutral. And that's because the protons, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. The number of positive charges equals the number of negative charges. Now, how many neutrons in this one? None. Yes, it's the neutrons. They always cross up. How many neutrons in this one? Two. Can you see how many neutrons in that one? Four. Four, yeah. Okay. So the neutron number has nothing to do with the proton or electron number. But in an atom, the proton number and the electron number always equal each other. Now, if not, and that can change. If not, it becomes an ion. We'll talk about that next week. This is what's called the periodic table of elements. Now, the atomic number, if you look back at this chart, or even this here, so you can see these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the atomic number. That indicates the number of protons. The number of protons determines the identity of the atom. So if an atom only has one proton, it's hydrogen. If it has six protons, it's carbon. If you muck around with the atom's protons, you change its personality, you change its identity. Back way back in the day, the, the alchemists, they were trying to take lead and make it into gold. They didn't have atom smashers. I don't care what they did to it, it wasn't going to work because they could not change the protons, the number of protons in the lead atom to give it the number of protons in a gold atom. Now, the mass number of an atom is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. It's basically what's in the nucleus. Electrons have very, 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 very little mass. According to our chart here, how many protons? So this, this atom is what? What's its name? Hydrogen, right? The big H, right? Hydrogen. So hydrogen has one proton, one electron, and no neutrons, right? Isn't that weird? It's the only atom that doesn't have a neutron. So its atomic number would be one, because it's got one proton, right? Okay. The mass number would also be one, because it's one proton plus no neutrons is one. Now, this one, this happens to be helium. Its atomic number is two, because it has two protons. Its mass number is four. Lithium. This happens to be lithium. Its atomic number is three. Its mass number would be seven. Now, if you look at that, uh, that big periodic table of elements, you'll also see a number down here with some digits. If you round it up, that's the mass number. The atomic weight, not mass number, but atomic weight is a little bit different. So if you see these numbers down here with all the all the uh, digits, uh, decimal places, that's what I was trying to say. The atomic weight is this is that number. And what it is, it for instance, hydrogen, not all hydrogen atoms have no neutrons. All hydrogen atoms have this have one proton. Otherwise they'd be something besides hydrogen, right? But you can have what are called isotopes. Different isotopes 
of hydrogen, helium, whatever. An isotope is an atom that has the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. So all of these atoms are hydrogen atoms. This is the one that's most common. One proton, no neutrons. Yeah. Yes. You have some natural ones, and then you also have some ones that they make up at Oak Ridge. Absolutely. Some unnatural. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, man-made. Uh, <laughs> yes. And in fact, it's the, it's the preponderance of the naturally occurring isotopes that makes that atomic weight have those extra numbers outside. There aren't many of these naturally. In tritium, I don't even think occurs naturally. You've got to make that. That's the one with one proton and two neutrons. Has a mass number of three, right? So that one is artificial. But every once in a while, you'll have one of these deuterium, we call it. Deuterium isotopes. And so the average mass, the average weight of a bunch of hydrogen is just a little bit more than one. Because every once in a while, you've got one of these suckers hanging out. We're not going to have to learn all of these symbols, but there are some that you're going to have to learn. Now, some of these are easy. O for oxygen, C for carbon, H for hydrogen, N for nitrogen, CA for calcium, big C, little a, P for phosphorus. Then it gets a little weird. K for potassium, NA for sodium. They couldn't use S for sodium because S is for sulfur. Fe for iron. So those are the, the chemical symbols that you're just going to have to know. Those are the ones that we're going to see the most often. Particularly sodium and potassium. We're going to see those quite a bit. So these are the elements that make up the majority of the atoms in our body. There are some elements that are in very, very small amounts. Those are called trace elements. So if you look at the periodic table, the ones that are in red are the major elements or the principal elements. The ones that are outlined in green here are the trace elements. Things like molybdenum, chromium, copper, zinc, boron, tin, cadmium. So those are, those are things that are only found in tiny, tiny, tiny amounts. Those are trace elements. Okay, so if you're looking at the study guide for this lecture, an atom is what? Smallest, stable, stable unit of matter. Okay, And then the names of the atoms are the elements. Matter is the stuff, all the stuff in the universe, all the matter in the universe is made out of atoms. The mass of something is how much stuff is there. And the weight of something is how much gravity pulls on the mass. For instance, I need to live on the moon because I would weigh much less on the moon. I still have the same mass... I still have the same number of atoms, but since the moon's gravity is less, my weight would be less. So on Earth, a lot of times we use the terms mass and weight interchangeably. They're actually different things. We talked about the subatomic particles, the protons, electrons, and neutrons. We talked about atomic number versus mass number. Atomic number is the number of protons. The mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. We didn't talk about this a whole lot. When I drew up the generic atom, I said we had the atomic nucleus, and that's where you had the protons and the neutrons. Then I said the electrons were hanging out in the electron cloud. This electron cloud is actually divided into separate levels called electron shells. So the electron cloud is, the, is basically all of this space outside the atomic nucleus where the electrons are hanging out. And then there are different, it's like there are different lanes on a highway. There are different energy levels or electron shells in this entire electron cloud. Uh, we talked about isotopes. Those were the different versions of an element that had different numbers of neutrons. And atomic weight, of course, was the average of all of those isotopes. And then we talked about the, the major 13 principal elements in the human body. All right, so let's talk about how these atoms are put together. Now, if you look at this atom here, tell me how these two these two atoms are different. How many electrons does this one have? Two. How many does this one have? Three. Yeah, so in this first electron shell, remember this whole thing is the electron cloud. This is the atomic nucleus. The first electron shell, or the first circle around this, can only hold two electrons. If an atom has more than two electrons, it has to have another shell to put them in. It is the electrons of an atom that determine its chemical properties, how the atoms relate to one another, how they combine to form different compounds and molecules. 
Remember, it's the number of protons that determine the identity or the name of the atom. But it's the electrons that determine what that atom is able to do. Electron shells, the first shell can contain up to two electrons. The second one can contain up to eight. The third one can actually contain more than eight, but it's happy with eight. As you go out from, from closest to the nucleus to further and further apart from the nucleus, the energy levels get higher. Now, every time we're adding an electron, what are we also adding to the nucleus? A proton, proton, right? So, atomic number of argon is what? Can't see it? 18? Argon is 18. So, how many protons in argon? 18, 18, right? (laughs) How many electrons? 18. 18. Okay, let's see. Mass number looks like 40. So, if the mass number is 40 and there's 18 protons, that means there must be 22 neutrons. So if we're going to arrange these electrons, so I'm going to have two here, seven, eight, and then eight more. Eight and eight is 16, and two is 18, and that gives me the right number of electrons. Elements that have full outer shells, their their outermost level, the highest energy level, if that electron shell is full, it's called an inert. By inert, we mean unreactive. It's quite happy in its own company. On this end of the periodic chart, Helium has a full outer shell. Neon has a full outer shell. Argon has a full outer shell. These are called the noble gases because they're noble. They're like royalty. They don't want to hang out with the common people. They are chemically inert. They they don't join up with anybody else. But all of the rest of these elements do not have full outer shells. They are reactive. They want a full outer shell. They want to be nobility. But they can't get their own, they cannot get there on their own. So they gotta hook up with somebody. So let's take sodium. I told you we talk a lot about sodium. Alright, how many shell how many shells? How many electrons in the outermost shell of sodium? One. One. <laughs> how many does it want to have? Eight. 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 Exactly. So how it, how can it get a full outer shell? easier to give its one away. Yeah, it could get seven, but if it gives the the extra one away, its outer shell is then full. So it's going to be easier for sodium to give up that extra one than to go out and find seven more. Now, chlorine, how many electrons in the outermost shell? Seven. Seven. So how many does it want? One. One. How convenient. (laughs) So these two hooked up on (laughs) eHarmony. What sodium does when it runs into chlorine, it says, hubba hubba. It gives her a ring, I mean an electron. It didn't do anything with its protons, right? But it gave up an electron. So now this atom is no longer neutral. It still has the same number of protons, but it's got one less electron. So this atom, atom, this whole atom now has a positive charge. Chlorine gains an electron. It still has the same number of protons, but it has now an extra electron. No, it's negative. Yeah. Because now it's got, remember, electrons are negative. So if you get an extra one, the whole thing is now negative. So sodium is now positive. Chlorine is now negative. And just like any kind of opposites, pluses and minuses attract. Sodium becomes, becomes positive. Chlorine becomes negative. But now they're happy because why? Yeah, their outer shells are full. When an atom gives up one or more electrons, it now becomes a positively charged ion, and we call it a cation. So we call this this compound sodium chloride. An atom that is no longer neutral is called an ion. If it is positively charged, we call it a cation. If it is negatively charged, we call it an anion. Okay, so the positive sodium ion is really attractive to the negative chloride ion. An opposite attracts, opposites attract, I should say, and a chemical bond is formed. Anytime two atoms hook up, you have a chemical bond. That's what a chemical bond is. An interaction or an attraction between two atoms. So a chemical bond is any type of attraction between two or more atoms, but between those two atoms. Now, this particular bond because it's between two ions, is called an ionic bond.